Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Let's look at section 3.2 of unit three. This is about measuring a variability, okay? This is one lesson uh, that we're gonna have on variability. Section 3.4, we're gonna talk about another way of measuring variability. Now, it's important to understand or have a good concept of how numbers are spread out, how they vary from each other. Doctors use it all the time. Uh, hospitals, pharmacies, businesses, teachers. We look at data and we need to be able to say things from that data. Now, some things you are familiar with, like range. Okay, so let's start. A box plot, which we just did in the last lesson, again, is a visual display of the way data vary. Okay, so if I, I just sketch a box plot here, okay, here's my whisker, here's my box, and here's the other whisker. Okay, now remember, you need to remember the parts, you need to know those parts of that box and whisker. Now, something you're very familiar with, you learned back probably in grade school already, is measuring the spread how spread out are the numbers, okay, which is the range. Now, that's the distance between the whisker endpoints, so the minimum to the maximum. So if you remember back in grade school, middle school, to find the range, you're going to take the maximum number or the biggest number, and you're going to subtract the minimum number, okay? That's one way to measure spread, okay? That tells us some information, but not everything that we need to know. Another way you can measure variability or spread is what's called the interquartile range. That's the length of the box, okay? Let me draw the box and whisker for you again. So this is another way that you could measure how spread out things are, but you're only going to look at the middle 50% because it's Q1 to Q3. So the IQR, the interquartile range, you would take Q3 minus Q1. Okay, and then you would come up with some number. All right. Now remember, you have the power of pause and rewind if I'm going too fast. Make sure you write these down in your notebook. We will be using the IQR uh, on a later assignment, all right, or on the assignment. So again, one way to measure how variable, how spread out the numbers are is range, which you're familiar with. And sometimes we want to just look at the middle 50% of the numbers the interquartile range, which is Q3 minus Q1, okay? But that's not the main part of today's lesson. We're going to look at another way to measure variability. All right, here we go. There are ways to obtain numerical measures of data that indicate inconsistencies, variation, or spread within data. One way to do this is to find the deviation or directed distance from each data value to the mean. Okay, you're going, what in the world? Okay, don't worry about it. It'll make more sense when we go through it. We're going to go through one example. And again, if I go too fast, you need to pause and rewind. Okay, in each screen, there's going to be quite a bit going on. So do your best, all right? Just one example, here we go. We're gonna see why doctors might wanna have a different way to measure the variability or the deviation. Here we go. So let's say we have two people, Kim and Mark. They have their cholesterol levels checked every other week for 14 weeks, okay? They're concerned about their cholesterol, so they're having it checked. So you can see Kim, who's in red, those are her readings. Mark is in blue, those are his readings. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process of finding the difference between each data point and the mean of the data for both. All right? So here we go. We're going to use a table. So the first thing we have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is find the mean. Now remember, mean is the same as the average. So we need to find the mean for Kim. So we're going to use our handy-dandy calculator. All right, we're going to use the table like we did in the last lesson. Okay, so I'm going to put it right, see if I can actually, well, I'm going to have to move it a little bit. So I'm going to put it right there, and I'm going to go stat, edit. Okay, now I've got numbers in my list. You might too, so let me go through that again. So go to the top of the list and hit clear. Do not use delete. Hit clear and then the down arrow. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and clear out list two. I'm going to go to the top, hit clear, and then the down arrow. Now, if you mess up, uh, turn your app off and turn it back on, and hopefully it'll be fixed. If it's not, you're going to have to Google how to reset your table. All right? Okay, so I'm only going to use list one, though. I'm going to do Kim, and then I'm going to do Mark's numbers. Okay, I'm not going to do use both lists. So here we go. I'm going to type in the numbers for Kim. Good thing this isn't a lot of numbers, right? Okay, now I got to move my calculator over because I have two more. Okay. I think I have those in. So let me double check to make sure I have all of the numbers. So I'm going to just do this. 82, 84, 185, 184, 185. Excellent. All right, now to find the mean, remember we're going to go stat, calculate, number one, and it says list one, so we're good to go. I'm going to go down to calculate, and there we go. All right, the mean is 184. So I'm going to put that in and I'm going to stay I'm going to stay consistent with my colors. All right. So the mean, the average cholesterol reading for Kim is 184. Okay, well, let's go ahead and look at Mark. Now, I'm going to pause the video and just type those in quick so I can save some time. So when you see me next, I will already have those typed in. So you might want to do the same. Go ahead and hit pause and get those typed in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've got them typed in. Okay, now I'm going to find them for Mark. So stat, calculate, number one. And let's see. Well, how about that? Hmm. Mark has the exact same for his cholesterol readings. Oh, now you might understand why the doctor can't just look at the mean or the average of the cholesterol readings because there's more to it than that. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to make it. So what you might want to do right now is you might want to pause and set up a table like you see here. All right, I'm going to keep right on going. So if you want to do that, pause the video now. So what we're going to do is we're going to, in the left-hand column, I'm going to go ahead and put Kim's levels. I'm going to rewrite them. Okay, 184, 185 are the next two. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with Mark. All right, I'm going to write Mark's levels in. Actually, I think I missed one. I did. I'll have to go fix Kim's. All right, I messed up on Kim's, so let me go fix Kim's quick. Let me go back, 182, 186, 182. I missed right here. So if you did the same thing, I apologize. Didn't mean to do that. All right, so let's get this fixed. All right, there we go, folks. Now it's fixed. So what we're going to do is we're going to find how far away 
is each of those readings from the mean. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take 182 and we're going to subtract the mean. So that's going to be a negative 2. All right, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to just keep subtracting the mean. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do it silently. All right, what I'm going to do, folks, is I'm going to pause and fill in the rest of this to save a little time on the video. So you might want to do the same thing. Pause, go ahead and fill it in, and then start the video back up. All right, so I've got all the numbers filled in, so make sure they match what you have. All right, if not, you may want to pause it and fix them at this time. I'm going to go ahead and keep going here. So looking at this, I can see that Kim, if I look at all of those numbers I just found, they are a lot smaller than Mark's. Okay, look at look at the deviations for Mark. They're they're huge compared to Kim, right? So the deviations indicate more variation in Mark's level than in Kim's. Okay, sorry I got an extra S on Kim there. Um, however. When a doctor gets a report, they're not going to get all of these readings. They don't want to have to still look through a bunch of numbers, okay? They want just certain numbers to look at that tells them all kinds of things, okay? So when they get a report, they're not going to get all of these deviations from, from the, the mean for both patients. So we've got to keep going on this, all right? So... What we're going to do next, the next step is we're going to add up those deviations and see if that helps us. So if I take and I add these numbers together, negative 2 and 2, well that's 0. Negative 2, 0, 1, 0, 1. Oh, well that all adds up. If I add that all together, folks, that adds up to 0. That's interesting. Huh. Okay, how about Mark? Well, if I add these together, let's see, the positives and negatives cancel each other out. Like, like this negative 32 and this 32, positive 32 cancel each other out. And I see that I've got, um, let's see, a 10 and a 16, that's 26, but negative 18 and negative 8, that's negative 26. Oh, they're going to cancel each other out too. Oh, I'm going to get zero. Well, that didn't help, did it? That tells the doctor absolutely nothing. So adding those deviations, and they will always add up to zero, folks. If you do it correctly, no matter what your data set is, those sums will always add up to zero. So that doesn't really do anything. So the deviation sum for both is zero. Therefore, the average deviation in both lists is also equal to, what do you think? Okay, zero. So that's not going to tell us a bit of information, is it? So we have to do an extra step, all right? Remember, you have the power of pause and rewind, so you may want to pause on this next, uh, next slide. So I, I, I condensed everything. So I put the deviations uh, in the second column. So those are the deviations we found for Kim, and then these are for Mark. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the absolute value deviation. Now, remember, absolute values are always positive. So that means, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to put all of the positive numbers down here. So like this will be positive 2, this will stay positive 2, this will be positive 2, 0, 1, 0, 1, all positives. Same thing for Mark, positive 32, positive 10, positive 18, positive 32, positive 16, positive 8, 0. 
Okay, so what are we going to do with those now? We're going to add them up. Okay, we're going to add them up. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1. Okay, that should be 8. So these add up to 8. Now I'm going to add marks together. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to add these together. And again, you may want to pause it and go ahead and add those up. So pause it now if you're going to do that. So 32, 10, 18, 32, 16, 8, 0. You should get 116. Cool. Now, we want to know what is the average or mean absolute value deviation. This is what could be on the doctor's report. Okay. To do that, we take that sum and we divide it by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers. Is that how many numbers there are? Yes, seven numbers. So eight divided by seven is 1.14. That is the average, that's like an average distance. I don't want to say distance, but that's, yeah, on average, how far away Kim's readings are from Mark's readings compared to Mark's, or to her average. Sorry, let me say that better. That's like how far away each of her readings were from her average. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with Mark. We're going to take 116 and divide it by 7. And we're going to get 16.5714. So that is the mean absolute deviation for Mark, which is much bigger. Okay, that is way bigger. So those are the numbers that might be on a doctor's report. Okay, so now when the doctor talks to them, the doctor can say something about their cholesterol. Again, their cholesterol average was the same. That didn't tell the doctor very much. But knowing the mean absolute deviations, the doctor sees a lot more. Okay? So, last slide. Again, you may want to pause as we go through this. So, please write these down. So, the mean absolute deviation provides one way to judge the average distance between data values and the mean. The larger mean absolute deviation for Mark indicates that his levels generally lie much further from the mean than do Kim's. Now remember, the doctor is not going to get all the individual readings. Okay, The people in the lab are going to put a report together and they're going to send it to the doctor. And they usually send you a copy of it too. So, the doctor will probably tell Mark to improve his eating habits because his readings are all over the place, okay? Some of you might know people who are on cholesterol medication because their cholesterol is too high. It's not good for the heart. A large value for the mean absolute deviation tells you that the data values are not tightly packed around the mean, okay? They're all over the place. As a general rule, a distribution with more data near the mean will have less spread and a smaller mean absolute value like Kim's readings. And that's the type of consistency the doctor would like to see when they check, when you get your uh, cholesterol levels checked. That's the type of consistency me as a teacher, I want to see when I grade tests. When I grade tests, I put them into like the grade book and we can see the average and then it tells us how far apart uh, on average the tests are from the mean and I don't like to see my my uh, absolute deviation I don't like to see that really big because that tells me tests are spread out all over we got high we got low okay I like to see a smaller uh, absolute deviation because that tells me the students are being more consistent with their test and it's closer to the mean all right, again, you have the power of rewind and pause. If you need to go back and rewatch any of that, you didn't quite get it, please do so. All right, good luck, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you on the next video.